I V M. I find it baffling how I've lived my life without credit up till now because now I can never go back. With Credit Protect, you will never miss a due date again because the app reminds you to pay your bills on time. Plus, it detects any hidden charges on your bill and gives you category-based analysis of your spends. It's like they have thought of everything to help make management of my cards frictionless. Don't believe me? Well, just download the Credit app. Folks, welcome to Paisa Paisa brought to you by Credit, the most rewarding credit card bill payments app. So I'm your host Anupam Gupta B50 on Twitter and I'm absolutely thrilled really thrilled to have with me for the very first time on our show on our podcast HDFC Mutual Fund folks that's a big one we're going to talk about the latest new fund offer the HDFC Multi Cap Fund my guest Gopal Agrawal fund manager at HDFC Mutual Fund don't go anywhere you'll really want to be listening into this one we'll be right back after this great convenience break Today's workplace is changing Rather than the office, now it is more like thousands of little offices with businesses relying even more on their IT heroes. And what do these heroes need? An unrivaled PC platform with performance, security, manageability, and stability for the entire fleet. The Intel V Pro platform with hardware-based security and advanced level threat detection. You can pummel security threats without lifting a finger or save the day anywhere by remotely updating and restoring your PCs even if they won't boot and you'll feel powerful using a validated and stable platform that ensures image and driver compatibility when you add new PCs the Intel V Pro platform built for what IT heroes do built for business and welcome back gopal welcome to paisa paisa thank you so much for doing this for our listeners thank you good morning everyone good morning so gopal multi cap funds all of us our listeners everyone you know who watches or knows the market knows about large cap funds and mid or small cap funds what exactly are multi cap funds you know how do they work and why are they unique sure so multi cap fund is uh, clearly has a defined uh, asset allocation between the large cap mid cap and small cap in this fund there is a 25% minimum allocation towards the each large cap mid cap and small cap and remaining 25% has been left to the discretion of the fund manager where we can either put into this three uh, stri- strategy or we can put some money into reit or invit or into fund of funds also so let's talk about this diversification across market cap segment right because a multi cap gives you all the flexibility to invest in each of these market segment which is large cap mid cap small cap and then i guess there's something called flexi cap sure. so why is this diversification important from our portfolio perspective so very clearly this diversification is very important as we know that any diversification try to reduce the risk uh, concentration risk in the portfolio it is very good this is a very good for a common retail investor which has uh, you know urge to create wealth in equity market but they don't have very large uh, knowledge to to time it well uh, you know wh- at what time which strategy whether it is a large cap will do well or mid cap or small cap you know and and generally we have seen it is very difficult to time the market so in that backdrop that the multi cap strategy is a wonderful strategy because the the asset allocation has been fixed at minimum 25% each into large mid and small so i would say that the per unit risk uh, uh, of uh, per, to the investor actually diminishes when you diversify so this is a product which is very good if you have investment horizon of over 3 to 5 years okay let's just get into a bit of the detail of how the allocation is done in each and every bucket right so there is how much sure. in large caps how much in mid caps how much in small caps and that you know that flexible portfolio sure so in this uh, clearly what uh, i i just want to come uh, very clearly uh, you know this category has come up from september 2020 when the regulator has come out carved out this strategy out of the flexi cap what happened in generally the flexi cap strategy in nifty 500 is a benchmark which is skewed towards the large cap in nifty 500 benchmark you have 78% weightage to the large cap 15% to the mid cap and 7% to the small cap and the discretion is given to the fund manager totally where where they 
want to move. So as the benchmark has a large cap heavy, generally, generally speaking, every flex, flexi cap tends to be large cap heavy, right? While in multi Cap, what, what the category itself says, you have to have minimum 25% in each into this three bucket, right? So this will give you real good diversification, right? You got my point. Yes. So, now, so, so uh, that is the very clear difference. And the, I would say this is very good for common retail investor, you know, looking at very clear demarcation in terms of asset allocation. Great. So folks, there's one Recommendation from my side, which I would recommend that you do is there is the presentation of the HDFC multi-cap fund NFO. Please go and download it. It'll be very interesting for you guys to know more about this product. So moving forward, Kopal, what about performance, right? Because I saw that on, you know, on slide four of your presentation that in you've said that in terms of risk return, multi-cap is in a very sweet spot. It's somewhere in the middle of the large cap and the mid and small cap performance. It's somewhere in the middle. So if we... yes. Talk about uh, performance first, of course, is if you can tell us what is the benchmark that you use, because like you said, uh, the Nifty 500 actually is al almost 80% large cap. So do you have a yes. different benchmark, one and two? What has been the performance of your strategy versus that? Sure. So in this uh, strategy, Nifty multi-cap benchmark is uh, having 50% weight to the large cap, 25% to the mid cap and 25% to the small cap. That is a benchmark uh, itself, actually. Now in actual portfolio, certainly it will differ because uh, I will try to, you know, our job is to create alpha and have consistent uh, performance in the portfolio so depending on the market opportunity we'll try to you know change between the various segment of the market as and when situation changes i just want to give you some insight you know we have seen in the last 16 years the six years the large caps have done the best three years mid cap and seven years small caps have done the best actually so it was it is uh, very difficult for anybody to time the market well that is why i said this product with uh, 50 25 percent each can work very well over long period of time and generally we have seen in a period of uh, tightening liquidity uh hardening interest rate and also credit uh, credit cost uh, you know expanding in this period the mid cap and small caps tends to underperform and in the money goes to the safety which is large cap and that tends to outperform so that we have seen so so i just give you a period mm -hmm. between fi 14 and fi 17 you know mid of 2017 you see small cap and mid caps have done well the post the ilfs crisis in september 2017 we have seen the significant uh, destruction into in mid cap and small cap for the next uh, two and a half years where like significant outperformance from large cap has been done, the mid and small have generally, you know, fell by more than 50% actually, right? While uh, post pandemic uh, in the recovery cycle from from July 2020, we are seeing the mid, ca mid cap and small caps are outperforming the large cap. So, so that you can see in the last uh, seven, eight years itself, we are seeing the two good cycle for small and mid and, and one good cycle for large cap. So that is why I would say that, uh, you know, it is very difficult to time and we can't predict macro so well. You know, we don't know the way how ILFS came into picture, you know, all this crisis. So uh, I would say this is that is why this product is very good for a common retail investor who has investment horizon of not less than three years to invest park money and, and enjoy over a period of time. Great. So folks, there's your takeaway that different market cap segments perform at different periods of time. And that is what the past history shows you. And this is a kind of a fund which balances everything out. So last question before we go into the break, Kupal, how is HDFC multi-cap uh, different from other similar products in the market? Because there are quite a few multi-cap funds out there. Why would you say, or rather, how is HDFC multi-cap different from all of them? So, uh, so generally, I would uh, like to share something which is good for an investor to understand. Means, uh, first, uh, I will not like to say that you know we are totally different than what my competitor are because it will be wrong to say. 
the only part is that HDFC is known for very strong research processes. We have, you know, over 900, uh, you know, nine research dedicated sectoral analysts. Apart from this, we have three fund managers also have research in responsibility, including me. We cover over 400 stock ourselves, and which, which includes 85% market cap of India. So significant strong research base will help us to construct the portfolio. And also in HDFC, we have very good, uh, uh, you know, large, mid and small cap fund, which is already available in the fund house. So the fund, uh, the current uh, scheme and also the guidance from the fund manager will help us to construct good suitable portfolio for our investors. Great. And just one thing that I realized that maybe our listeners might want an idea of the examples of large cap sectors. So if you, when you sure. say large cap sectors, what sectors are we, or large cap stocks or sectors, whatever, what sectors are we talking about? When you say mid caps, typically what are those sectors? Small caps, yeah. what are those sectors? So generally, you know, the large cap sectors uh, primarily, uh, you know, the, any company can fit into large, mid and small, but w w w you know, generally we are seeing the companies which are into banking and financial or into energy space or into the commodity space or into, uh, you can say engineering and construction company. So generally speaking, the, you have uh, uh, textile sector, uh, ceramic sector, application software development or lab uh, pathological lab uh, company they are generally come into the small cap sector right while uh, you have auto auto ancillary uh, companies uh, you know then you have uh, let's say this uh, you know, you can say the the uh, api company in pharma sector sure. they generally come into mid cap right so while the core pharma generic company comes into large cap so these are like a primary differentiation we are seeing actually folks just remember that like gopal said at the start of his answer that there are companies that can be across all spectrum it, it, it uh, generally what sebi has mandated very clearly the top 100 companies are large cap between 101 to 250 is a mid cap that is 150 number of stocks and 251 beyond are small cap right so these are the sebi definition top 100 is large cap 101 to 250 is mid cap and beyond is a small cap right that's a very clear and simple classification and i hope that makes you guys understand how multi caps work so folks on that note we're going to take a small credit convenience break we will be right back on this really special episode of pesa pesa my guest gopal agrawal fund manager at hdfc mutual fund we'll be right back 100 bucks that's all it takes to begin your journey with bitcoin and ethereum no really with CoinSwitch, you can start investing in over 100 cryptocurrencies with just 100 rupees. On top of that, there are zero charges for deposits and withdrawals, so you can trade, buy, sell, however and whenever you want. All of this, plus their extremely intuitive interface, makes CoinSwitch the perfect app for beginners in the crypto space. But don't take my word for it. Just download CoinSwitch for free and try it out for yourself. If you'd like more information on cryptocurrencies, tune into a show about crypto with me, Rohan Joshi. My new adventure on IBM Podcasts. Coin switch. Kuch to badlega. And welcome back to this really special episode of Vesa Vesa. Gopal, now let's talk about big picture, right? Because a lot of people are bullish about India's economic prospects going forward after the COVID. You know, let's hope that there is no third wave. But where things stand as of now, what's your take? What's HGC Mutual Fund's take of India's economic prospects going forward? So uh, currently, India's uh, economic prospects are really looking uh, quite bright uh, because, uh, you know, see, uh, India's uh, real problem comes from two liquid, one which comes from top and one which comes from the bottom, means the rain which comes from the top and the oil which comes from the bottom, right? So what we are seeing for the last three consecutive years, the monsoon in India was uh, normal you know, which is very positive. So the, you know, the soil uh, moisture level or to the reservoir level is very comfortable. So the food grain production side, we are in a comfortable position. Now coming to the, to the uh, water, which comes from bottom, it is the oil. So the oil prices, in my view, because of decarbonization, people moving to EV, natural gas, uh, hydrogen sale, battery technology. So increase 
fundamentally we are heading for a benign oil price scenario in in near term very near term what has happened the oil prices have moved up because of vaccination the the demand has picked up while uh, opec has curtailed the production dramatically and also because uh, of covid we saw the us uh, oil pr prices went to negative right so the producers of shale oil were in a shock position so as soon as there was some recovery they are hedged their production at lower level because they want certainty right so because of this the us shale production is uh, lower by a million barrel than the uh, pre covid level so my sense is that with uh, oil as at close to 75 to 80 dollar per barrel this is very remunerative for them and as soon as their hedging period will be over you will see the supply will start hitting the market and based on various estimate people are saying that uh, by in uh, after uh, march april 2022 you will see additional supply from shell will hit the market so which will likely to keep the oil market in balance and uh, you know benign oil prices and apart from this you must have heard about ev adoption battery technology hydrogen uh, fuel so that is why uh, structurally india is looking uh, very solid and there are a lot of good effort done by the government on uh, you know overcoming the problems in gst collection now gst collection is averaging uh, ytd at 1 lakh 15000 uh, crore per month which is uh, higher than the budgeted number and uh, also like uh, we have very comfortable forex reserve of 640 billion dollar which we have import cover of close to 15 months right and uh, now manufacturing is doing very good government as india has given pli scheme for for 13 sectors right uh, and uh, then we have certain natural advantage because of benign interest rate scenario good hiring into it sector right you must have heard it uh, sectors are people are getting four to five job offers significantly heightened the demand because of uh, digitization across the globe so uh, we have uh, seen very good our consumption power demand as is rising uh, you know in recent past the auto sector has not done well because of first uh, because of pandemic lockdown and then followed by cheap shortages so which is likely to come back in the next six to nine months which will further give impetus to industrial gdp so uh, i would say india has a very positive macro outlook in near term certainly i would like to caution to the to the viewer and to the listener that uh, in the in the very short run what we are seeing because of higher energy prices and uh, you know the in near term the liquidity is uh, tightening uh, interest rates have bottomed up out and our trade deficit have moved up so in very very near term from uh, i would say from september to march 2022 this period will have some volatility in our macroeconomic picture but the medium term picture really looks brighter excellent thanks for a detailed answer gopal what about specific bright spots you know or sectors or anything that you're looking forward to because a lot of people talk about the capex cycle coming back some people are talking about consumption, some people are talking about anything of other sectors. So from your perspective, what are the specific sectors that you are looking forward to? See, first of all, you know, the consumption will certainly thrive in India because we have really the young population. And you know that in the era of uh, social media, everybody wants to uh, look better, feel better and wants to post better picture on to Instagram or on their profile pic. You know, I'm just sharing with you how societal changes have happened in my age when we start used to you know get a job first of a job of first of our requirement was to buy a house now it has become you know maybe tertiary you know or or beyond it right so there are many other uh, you know priorities have come into picture so this is the social changes societal changes which we are seeing so that is why i'm very bullish on consumption actually right and especially people are moving for package and branded product so and because of uh, covid also we are seeing now people have more propensity to health and hygiene so that is why uh, consumption this is a structural story that you know that that will certainly be there and there is no denial of it apart from this i'm very positive on manufacturing in india because uh, you know india has really come up as a good sourcing hub and uh, because of pli schemes of uh, impetus from the government uh, really a lot of uh, great things are happening in that and corporate uh, i have 
पर हैव मिस टू से कॉर्पोरेट बैलेंस शीट हैज रिपेयर्ड सिग्निफिकेंटली इन इंडिया सो विद द इंप्रूवमेंट इन प्रॉफिट डेट इक्विटी रेशियो हैज कम डाउन फ्रॉम 1 टू 0.71 सो द सो द कंपनीज आर इन अ पोजीशन टू डू सम इन्वेस्टमेंट इनटू डी बॉटल मेन डी बॉटल लेकिंग रिफर्मिशमेंट ऑफ प्लांट और यू नो इवन पुटिंग अप द न्यू कैपेसिटी so that is my manufacturing i am very bullish actually excellent let's talk about the equity markets outlook that's also a section in your presentation gopal but um, where we are today you know there's kind of i i wouldn't say nervousness but people are probably taking a step back there are concerns around valuation everything has gone up so fast so soon what are your views on equity market outlook going forward Sure. So uh, certainly, I'll I'll concur to this view that uh, in the market currently, only factor which is not very comfortable is the valuation. Okay, because uh, on the near term basis, uh, on FI twenty three basis, I would say that market is really fairly valued uh, at this juncture. No denial of this, but you know, so that there can be some correction in the market, which I can't rule it out. But you know, this as I told you in many. base uh, from september till march 2022 we may have some headwind in terms of macro uh, liquidity interest rates and everything but uh, this is not a long lasting problem actually so and uh, earning growth picture of the corporate india has really turned good with improvement in uh, credit cost in the banking and financial space recovery in auto space which is expected housing cycle has revived right so i would say that uh, if you take a longer term picture not very long very far long but if you take even 2 to 3 years view then situation is good and there can be a correction in the journey i can't rule it out but it won't be disastrous right because uh, you know when your balance sheet is very good you can see now a uh, steel sector has also delivered which we have never heard of right so so the corporate balance sheet is so strong right so you, the market can correct but it can't be so meaningful that until unless some you know unforeseen event happen right so so really the downside in my view is is there uh, can be there but it won't uh, derail the rally and uh, and uh, medium term outlook looks very positive for me excellent gopa last question something that all of us talk about a lot whether it's on social media or whether with us whether with its a friend family everywhere you read active versus passive Big yes debate. what are you yeah so i i'll be very upfront uh, to say that you know generally in a growing economy you know the active fund management does well you know so still in india there is a room for active management but what has happened let me be very clear to for the viewers to understand what happened uh, post the ilfs crisis you know in in 18 months the nifty performance came only from five stocks you okay right so remaining 45 stock didn't participate so you can tell me you know that for a any active manager it was impossible to beat the index right and uh, uh, because of that concentrated move which has happened in the market that is why what happened it had uh, really uh, you know uh say it has given very inferior picture of active fund management performance for close to 4 to 5 years right while i would uh, say that this narrower rally which has happened in the market during that period uh, may not continue and which we are seeing this year you know in the last a uh, 15 months or so we are really seeing broad based rally in the market and active fund managers are able to outperform the market so uh, you know in a high growth scenario uh normal credit cost and uh, also good liquidity and benign interest rate generally the the you know the active managers can or tends to outperform but honestly speaking in the long run uh, creating alpha uh, would be difficult you know but uh, still i would say for the next uh, uh, you know coming decade still i feel that uh, active can do uh, justice with the money from the investors fantastic folks and on that note that is a wrap on this episode of pesa pesa my guest gopal agrawal fund manager hdfc mutual fund gopal thank you thank you so much for doing this for our listeners sure thank you very much
And folks, now the great privilege tip of the week, understand which category your equity mutual fund is investing in, right? Is it a large cap, mid cap, small cap, active, passive? Remember that equity mutual funds are of all categories, are of all varieties. And the one that you're investing in should be aligned to your long term financial goals. The last thing you want is to have a short term financial goal and a long term asset. That's a clear mismatch. Please check which type of equity mutual fund you are investing in. That, folks, is your credit privilege tip of the week. And listeners, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm your host, Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter. Thank you, folks, for listening to Baisa Baisa, brought to you by Credit, the most rewarding credit card bill payments app. No material on the show should be considered as financial advice. The material on the show is for informational purposes only. Please consult a financial advisor before taking any investment decision. I V M